So if you have a really strong passion, really strong feelings, you've got a crazy heart that just loves and runs and loves and attaches and wraps up, then you got to have a little bit stronger mind. Your mind needs to run out ahead of that. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for watching and listening wherever you came from. I know we got a lot of TikTokers lately that are coming from TikTok, from the clips I put on there, and then coming to the full-length podcast. Got a lot of people doing the same thing from After Midnight, my radio show, or maybe you just uh, are a long-time listener. So thank you. I love this platform. I love doing it so much so that, uh, it, you know, I've been traveling a lot lately, playing a lot of music, and I'll squeeze even the littlest time to come do this podcast because I still think it's so important and it's so fulfilling for me. So what I do is I read your questions. I'm not prompted by any of them. I don't have uh, research on them. I don't have notes in front of me. We're just going to go through your emails, which you email me, grangersmithpodcast at gmail.com. That's the email. I put it in the queue. My request is keep it uh, readable about the size of a phone and then... Don't send the same one twice. Those are my only two requests. It could be about any subject. Let's jump in. First question, subject line says, how to break up the right way. Hey, Granger, I'm currently deployed in the military overseas right now, and my relationship with my girlfriend is struggling. We were not in a good spot before I left for deployment, and we argue all the time. She texted me and accused me of talking to other girls just because I had forgotten what our conversation was about. She constantly gets irritated with me and has a short temper and is always upset. I'm worried about breaking up because I know it will hurt her heart and I know it's but I know it's what's best for me and her. I don't see a future with her and and I know that she isn't the one, but I still love her and I'm no longer in love with her if that makes sense. I know this breakup will be the best for both of us, but I'm not sure how to go about go about it. Uh I don't get home for another 5 months just want to get this relationship uh in the right place while I'm over here. If you could help me, please, Anonymous. Okay. First of all, Anonymous, thank you for your service. Thank you for what uh, you're doing for this country. And the situation you're in is not, uh, it's not crazy. It's not abnormal. How do you break up with a girl? You know, she's not the right one. Of course you love her. I, I agree with you. There's a, there's a form of love we have for everybody. And especially if you spent time with someone, you develop a relationship uh, just like you love a friend and you love a, a girlfriend or an ex-girlfriend. So I understand that. And I understand that you're, you you know she's not the one. Um, you're having trouble. And it's it's really good because so many of these deployments, what happens is you get close to your your girlfriend and then you go on deployment and the bad things that you had before you left don't seem as bad anymore because now you're on deployment and you don't see any girls and so you just miss her and you miss home and you kind of confuse those the missing of home with she's the right one let's go ahead and get married as soon as i get home and make a baby and we we see that all the time especially on this podcast and then i get emails and then and then you have you you've make babies at home and then there's a, a much bigger problem so hey anonymous it's this is pretty good that you're you're realizing it right now now what i will tell you is when you're going to break up with a girl that you don't that you know is not the one for you you're sure of that the best thing to do for her if you love her and i know you do is is make this happen as soon as possible and make it happen as truthful as possible with an open conversation now that hurts and that's going to hurt her of course it is but this is the best way to do it for you because that's the best thing you could do for her is be completely honest and break it off now while it's on your mind. It's not going to get any better. And then it gives her time to heal and move on. And it gives you time to do the same. So um, now on deployment, I'm not sure if you, I'm not sure if you're in a place where you could have phone calls. If you are, please phone call or FaceTime. Skype is way better than an email or a text. So uh, I would I would suggest the the first option on deployment is a Skype video message. My second option would be a phone call where she could hear your voice. If you can't do one of those two options, I don't think I would email this. I don't think I would text this. This is this is uh, too big for that. She needs to hear the sincerity in your voice. 
and then and then you just lay it out as honest as possible and when i say honest as possible this means you need to you need to shut the door you you don't need to say things like who knows maybe maybe when i get back we can get together and have coffee and maybe it'll work out and you're saying that cuz you don't believe it you're saying it because you just want to pull the bandaid off a little lighter and not have it hurt her so bad but the truth is you're ready to move on and you know she's not what's best for you that's what that's those are your words and so it's like hey and and you should probably get to it right at the beginning of the conversation so that you don't have a bunch of small talk before but it's like it's like hey this is not working out with us i think you're a great girl and i do love you to some extent but I don't see you as my future wife and I don't see us together long term. I know this hurts and trust me this conversation is terrifying to me and it's very difficult because I think you're a great girl and I think you're going to make a great wife to someone today but it's just or someone soon but it's just not me. And it's going to be tough man your your heart's going to be beaten when you make that call when you make that that Skype message. Your heart's going to be racing. You're going to be nervous. You're going to want to put it off. You're going to want to say, I'll do it tomorrow. Or she's busy. She's at work. I'll do it later. But it's like, send her a message and say, hey, I would love to have a video call with you. And as soon as she could do it, you got to do it right then. Don't put it off. Because every second that you put it off is weight on you. And it's time taking away from her healing. And what we want in this situation is for her to heal as soon as possible. So you you have the hard conversation, but then it's not over with you yet, because then the self control has got to kick in. Because here you are, you're only five months into a deployment. I'm sure you've got many months left, and you got to fight that temptation with self control and self discipline. That's going to want to make you call her back and say, "I was wrong," or she's gonna she's gonna reach out to you and say, "Please, is there anything I could do? I'll change. I'm a new person. I'll be better." And you, you got to fight with self-control to either not reply or to just reply lovingly saying, I'm so sorry, but this has to be over. And that's difficult because you're going to get lonely and you're going to doubt it. As soon as you hang up with her, you're going to doubt that this is the, you're going to think this is the wrong decision. I made the wrong decision. But your email right now is telling me it's not a wrong decision. It's the right thing to do. It's the loving thing to do to her. This is the fair and right thing to do to her and you. But you got to do it. Next question says, subject line, tragic slash uncommon situation. Hey, Granger, I'm 22 years old. I'd like to remain anonymous. The past two years have been some of the most challenging years of my life. I was in a tragic vehicle accident that was my fault. As a result... For a time, I've had my license suspended, not a DUI. Through all of this, God has drawn drawn me closer to Him and used this extreme tragedy for His glory, even though the road continues to be uncertain to me. Due to this, I'm still living with my parents, but I feel as if I cannot progress forward in finding a future spouse, Lord willing, along with other various adult responsibilities. I have great friends, and I know the Lord will continue to sanctify me through it all, I'm just looking for some practical advice and wisdom, which you always seem to have. Thank you for reading this. I love your music podcast and most of all, your heart for Jesus. To to God alone be all the glory, Anonymous. Okay, Anonymous, thank you for the email, brother. I'm, I'm sorry uh, of the predicament that you're in with the uh, the car accident. It happens. It does. So th- what I would do, I would, I would go this direction with you. You are telling me your words are beautiful. Your email is great, right? It's like all the right words. But but what I would say is let's let's look back at your words and let's look at some of the things that you said. You said, through all of this, God has drawn me closer to him and used this extreme tragedy for his glory. Later on, you said, I know the Lord will continue to sanctify me through it all. So let's take those two sentences and put it next to some other things that you wrote. The road continues to be very uncertain. I am cannot I cannot progress forward in finding a future spouse. 
or other adult responsibilities. I'm looking for practical advice and wisdom. So those, all, all those things don't align with the same cohesive thought. There's inconsistencies there. And I'm here not to tell you what to do, but just to point out some in- inconsistencies with your thought. So if, if you believe that God has drawn you closer to him and using this tragedy for his glory, and that the Lord will continue to sanctify you through it all, if you're putting those thoughts together, then that should eliminate the other ones. It should eliminate the uncertainty of the road. Well, of course it's uncertain. Your future is none of your business. My future is none of my business. It should also eliminate the, I cannot progress forward in finding a future spouse. Of course you can't with that sentence, but you can progress forward in finding a future spouse and other adult responsibilities if you truly trust. So what what that comes down to really in your question is a trust issue. You're saying the right things, which is great, but you're, you're not trusting the things that you're saying. I know God is using this tragedy, but, but, what, but I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go from here. I can't progress. Well, then that's not trusting in his plan. Trusting in his plan is admitting that, what I just said. It's like, God, I mean, you're, I'm talking anonymous. You're on your knees at night and you're like, God, I know, I know from your word that I've read throughout the Bible, I know your word says you will use this tragedy for your will, for your purpose, for your good. But I'm struggling trusting in it. Rebuild that trust in me. Gift me through your grace. Gift me trust in this plan. Strip this anxiety from me. Strip this stress away from me because I don't want to trust my own self. I don't want to trust what Granger says on the podcast because he's just a faulty man like me. I don't want to trust things of this world that can get me to the next step so that I can get to the next step so that hopefully I could find a spouse one day. Let me not trust that, God. I'm going to trust you. I believe in you. I believe that everything in my life is laid out. When I love you and I, and I read your word, I believe that you have laid out a plan for me. So I'm going to trust in that. I'm going to trust that right now I don't have my future spouse in mind. I'm going to trust that I'm not supposed to right now. I'm also going to trust that you're going to give me the desires of my heart, meaning not the desires I want, but your desires, what you want for me. You're going to give those to my heart. You're going to fill me with that, that desire so that I, I can then move on and go, I'm, I'm now, I'm kind of thinking about this hobby or this career path or this way to serve. I'm thinking about this. Like I'm, I'm starting to develop a heart for people that got into ac- car accidents that are having trouble moving on. I'm having a heart to go to the hospital and talk to those people and say, look at me. I was in your situation. I was in your hospital bed. I know what you're going through. And this is what I did. I trusted in the Lord. And here's how you trust in the Lord. You get on your knees and you say, God, give me trust. And then you go back to his word and you just devour it. Like you need it, like like you're thirsty for it. The living water, like you're hungry for it. That's the substance you need. Man cannot live on bread alone, but by every word from the mouth of God, that's what you need. So, So you're preaching that in hospitals, Let me build this scenario out. You start to develop a passion for people that have been like you, that are searching, that are needing something. How do you think this podcast started for me, by the way? You got this desire for people that have been in situations like you, and you want to bring them to God. You want to bring them to the trust that you have. And while you're doing it, I'm just going to make up a scenario. You're doing that. And through that, you meet somebody on that path, a nurse, somebody at the hospital, maybe somebody that was in an accident like you, maybe someone that's doing the same thing as you and you meet them and you really like her and you get to talk to her and you start a relationship with her and you think to yourself, this never would have happened if I never trusted. If I didn't completely surrender and get my trust from God and have him, have him fill me with that, this never would have happened. I never would have met her. And now I have her. You see how that works? See how that trust works? Instead of saying the opposite is, 
I trust that God is going to use this tragedy for his, his glory. So what do I do next? I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. You see the discrepancy? That's, that's an inconsistency. And, and this is nothing against you because I understand it. Why do you think I can explain it so well? Because I understand it, brother. I, I know this feeling personally. And it's a trust issue. It's like, God, you got this. You got this. I'm going to continue to move forward. And I'm going to continue to, to serve you and praise you because you got this. And along that path, Lord willing, you bring somebody into my life. Amazing. And if you don't, that's part of your plan too. I continue to trust. Anonymous, don't let this be a trust issue. Take a break. Be right back. Podcast is brought to y'all today by Ship Station. You know, we run an apparel company and for so many years, we try to do things the hard way when there was always an easier way. And sometimes it just takes experience to finally figure out to do the easy thing instead of the hard thing. That's why I want to tell you today about Ship Station. Sometimes you can get doing things the hard way without realizing it. But when you run a business, doing things the hard way means you're holding yourself back and your business back. Ship Station gives e commerce sellers an easier way to manage shipping. So you take all the energy that goes into managing orders and choosing carriers and printing labels and all the things that helps actually grow your business. No wonder ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 sellers. It was so much easier when we realized the easy thing to do was go to ShipStation and let them handle our shipping so we could focus on other things and not shipping. That's so complicated. I'm just not a numbers guy. ShipStation will make you wonder why you ever did shipping the hard way. It works with all your storefronts like Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and more. And it lets you automate the processes like fulfillment and tracking. So it gives you more time to manage orders while keeping customers happy. So you get deeply discounted shipping Shipping rates normally reserved for the Fortune 500 companies, and you could easily compare carriers, rates, and delivery time. So it's really easy to choose the best option for every single kind of shipping scenario. In fact, 98% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep on using it as long as they're in business. ShipStation isn't magic, but it will make your shipping stress disappear. Sign up using the promo code Granger for a free 60-day trial at ShipStation.com and start breathing easier with every shipment. That's two whole months of stress-free shipping, and it's free to try. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in Granger. ShipStation, make ship happen. The show is also brought to you all by Movement. That's MVMT. You probably heard me talk about Movement a lot. See, in this tiny apartment in Southern California, two college dropouts teamed up to create a watch company that broke all the rules with fair prices, unexpected colors, and clean original designs. Movement, MVMT, grew into one of the fastest growing watch brands, shipping to over 160 countries across the globe. Now they've also expanded into blue light glasses that protect your eyes from screens, minimalist jewelry, and more more style essentials that don't break the bank, all designed out of their headquarters in California. So I love the blue light glasses. I'm wearing one of the watches right now. I'm wearing one of the glasses right now too. And I've just kind of got hooked on this stuff since I started reading for the podcast. When it comes to watches, I like the field watches. I'm just kind of a more of a uh, classic like Vietnam era field watch kind of guy. I like the simple ones and movement has great ones. I've been wearing it for a long time. They're super sleek and professional. In fact, if you've seen me play the last I don't know, 100 shows I'm wearing of Movement Watch, not because they tell me to, but because I just actually like it. Plus, they're really, really affordable. They look like a four to $500 watch that you pay for in a department store, but it's like a fraction of that cost because they were built online with their own process from start to finish. So you get a beautiful watch shipped right to your door for free. If you don't love it, you ship it right back for free. I've also spent so much time in front of my computer, unfortunately, in front of a screen. And these blue light glasses really help me be able to have less eye strain. I actually went to the vision doctor the other day and told him about the movement glasses. And the doctor affirmed that, yes, they really do help. If you want to help to elevate your look and style that doesn't break the bank, then join the movement. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash Granger. Again, that's mvmt.com slash Granger. 
Okay, back to these questions. Next one, Septic Line says, girlfriend still friends with an ex. Granger, I love the podcast. I'm 20 years old. I recently saw my girlfriend of about one year Snapchatting an ex-boyfriend of hers. She told me that she was still friends with her ex. And she was friends before we started dating. I didn't think much of it. She said that they don't talk that often and only check up every few months. I confronted her about this. And she told me that they check in on one another because they encourage each other to grow in their faith. Apparently, he was having troubles, and she was there for him, and they dated for a few months, and then she ended it poorly because he didn't treat her well. Or she said it ended poorly because he didn't treat her well. She admitted that they had deep emotional relationship at the time, and that she's already explained that she's gonna, she wasn't going to stop talking to him, and she wants to know if overlooking the whole... I want to know... Sorry, I'm having trouble reading today. I want to know if overlooking the whole thing is a red flag or if it's just being immature. I trust her and her intentions. And we semi-compromised as she promised to tell me that whenever they talked. She offered to introduce me to him, but I declined. Am I wrong in being a bit jealous? Does this make me immature or is it a red flag? Thanks so much and please keep me anonymous. Okay. Thanks for the email, anonymous. I appreciate you, brother. Um, Yeah, let's dive into this. So I, I, I personally think, uh, I, I'm going to agree with you. I, I think it is a red flag. Um, I don't want to dwell on jealousy, but at the same time, all of us have our jealous tendencies when the other person allows us to, or gives us enough reason to be jealous. So what I mean is, there's no such thing as a, as a, a person that has zero jealousy at all. There's no such thing. There's just people that are less jealous in certain relationships and more jealous in other relationships because of either how they're acting in that relationship and what they're doing or because how the other person is acting around them. So, yes, I, I think it's a red flag. Um, there, are, there are problems when a guy and a girl are are in a relationship, but then outside of the relationship, they have a really good friend with strong emotional ties that used to date and they get each other through strong, bad problems and they give each other advice and they help each other up. I, I, there's, there's, a, there's something very wrong with that because if we're talking about a spouse especially, she should be getting that from you, not someone else. So you, you should be the provider of this emotional support. You should be the one with the strong emotional tie. Now, we would expect her to just know this and see it. And we, we would expect her to say, man, I'm, uh, I'm going to stop doing this. Because, for, here's the reason. Not because this other guy's a bad guy, or not because, because he's already in a relationship and, I, and I'm never going to like him or because I'm not, I'm not attracted at all to him. Not because of those reasons, but we would ex- expect her to stop this for the reason of you. We would expect her to stop because she says, I recognize this is hurting you. This is putting extra stress on you. And I don't want to do that to you, regardless of who this other guy is, regardless of our old friendship. What I'm saying right now is, is one of these things that gets put on TikTok and people just revolt because they're like, I've, I've been married for 25 years and I, I have a really close relationship with a guy and we, we're close emotional ties. And I would say to that person, great, this is not about you. This is a different, this is, this is the email that came to me and this guy is genuinely stressed out about it, right? So buddy, un, Mr. Anonymous, um, I think you're right in these feelings, and, and I think she's wrong by saying, here's, here's your sentence. She already explained that she, she was not going to stop talk to him, t- talking to him, and, and I just think that's wrong. I think if you confront her and you say, babe, this is, this is kind of messing me up. This guy, I, I, know, I know that you love me. I know you're attracted to me and not to him. I know you don't love him in that way but it just bothers me that you're seeking advice from 
another guy or, or you're pouring into another guy emotionally. It just bothers me. And if she can't say, whoa, I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm going to stop. If she can't say that, that's the red flag. It's not, it's not as much the fact that she's doing it. It's the fact that she's not willing to stop doing it for you. What else is she not willing to stop doing for you? And if you get married one day, what would she not be willing to stop for the sake of you? These are just questions I have. I think you have the same questions. It's a red flag. I would go back to her and I would, I would repeat this again. Just say, I, I need you to stop because it makes me really uncomfortable. And I'm not a jealous guy and I don't, I don't want to be that jealous guy, but this makes me uncomfortable. I'd like you to stop. And if she says, well, I'm not going to stop, then brother, the next thing you got to say is, I think we need to slow down with this relationship then. That's how much this means to me. Because you don't have to say this part, but what you're thinking is, because I would, I would want to pursue someone out there, someone else, that would drop everything for the sake of our relationship, for the sake of me being hurt, me being uncomfortable. For the sake of that, I, I would rather pursue someone that goes, hey, if you feel that way, I will stop today because I don't want to jeopardize me and you. And there are people out there that will do that for you. There's somebody for you that's, that's going to do that. All right, next question. Subject line says, how do you set standards at my age? Hey, Granger, my boys introduced me to your music several years ago. And recently I found, well, God led me to you online on your sermons, which led me to YouTube, which led me to your podcast. Let me just say thank you for sharing all your gifts with the world. You and your family are amazing. My question is, I'm a single mom who's made so many mistakes with men. I honestly wish I could just start over. But then I'd have to know, how do you set standards? What's acceptable? I feel like I'm bordering on judgment if I'm not careful. Any help would be very much appreciated. Blessings, boy mom. So, um, boy mom, thank you for your kind words to me. I can't take any credit for what you said because, um, because I am a sinful, broken man. I'm a wretch, but uh, I've been transformed by God's word. And so I'm not going to take any credit for that. So, but I will say thank you um, for what you're seeing through me, if that makes sense. Um, you've made many mistakes with men and you want to just start over. Hey, stand in line, get in line because you're no different than anyone else. No judgment here. Uh, I, I would say every single person listening to this podcast has a similar story. And if they don't, they're just not admitting it. But we, we all struggle with relationships until we find the right one. And when we do find the right one, sometimes we struggle with that too. So you're, you're not different in this. You're human. And I totally understand it. No judgment on my end. But you're asking, how do I set standards? Well, you're a boy mom. And this, the standards for you are not that different than someone without kids. But I could lay them out clear, more clear, because that's the question you asked me. But uh, as you're dating, you, you, don't, you don't bring them to your house to live with you. You don't move your kids in with him and live with him until you got a ring on your finger and you're married. Uh, you, don't, you don't let your heart get too attached. You put brakes on your heart. Your mind is, is very involved in this situation. So your mind has to control your heart in this situation. And when I say your heart, that's a term used to, to talk about your feelings. So you got to control your feelings and drive them with your mind. And don't let your feelings drive what you do. Okay, you need feelings. You need emotion. You need heart. You need it. But, but you got to be... You got to... Make sure that you have breaks on there where your mind is making the ultimate decision. So if you have a really strong passion, really strong feelings, you've got a crazy heart that just loves and runs and loves and attaches and wraps up, then you got to have a little bit stronger mind. Your mind needs to run out ahead of that. 
so that if you're a passionate person, great. But you have, you have to have a really strong self-control, self-discipline will that can control those crazy feelings. So you go, I love, I love being passionate and, ha- and having crazy feelings and going all in. I love going all in. But I do have a mind that goes, that's too far. That's too far. And with, with, with your boy at home, uh, you actually more than one, you have multiple boys at home, then you have to ride those brakes a little harder. So your standards are when you meet a man, look at his life, look at the fruits of his life. Not how handsome he is, not how much money he makes, not how well he talks to you, not how sweet he is, not how, how he pays for dinner and opens doors. You need to look at the fruits of his life because right now he's a used car salesman because he sees you and he's selling himself. And so he's going to put all his good attributes out front. But you need to look at the fruits of his whole life. Like how many times has he divorced? Does he have kids? Where are they? Are they in Florida? And he's in... California and he never sees them. He never calls them on their birthday. Why? That's bad fruit. What happened in the divorce? Was it was it something that he did when they got divorced? Is he just genuinely an angry person, but he's super sweet to you because he hasn't shown that side yet? What do his friends say? Who are his friends? Are they partiers? Did they just go out and try to pick up girls at bars all the time? Are they good family men? Are they, do they have a decent character? Does he have integrity as reflected by his friends and his parents and his upbringing? What kind of guy is he? Has he can he overcome suffering that he had? Can he overcome bad parents that he had? Or is he just like his dad? He's an abuser just like his dad. But he doesn't show that to you because he's being cool right now because he's selling himself. So we could see somebody by the fruits of their life. What kind of job does he have? I'm not talking about money or status or power. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, what does he do that has something in, that involves integrity? Like, is he, is he a guy that just, that goes out and just scams people for a living, basically? Is he trying to take, take, take from the world? Or is he, guy, is he a guy that serves the world? and serves people and has a servant heart. Here's a, here's a key for you. How does he treat waiters and waitresses when you go out to eat? That's a big one. Is he, is he the kind of guy that goes, hey, I told you like five minutes ago I wanted iced tea. Where's the iced tea? Or is he the kind of guy that goes, hey, no worries. I know you're busy. You're busy with, you got so many tables. Just get my tea whenever you can. No big deal. Is he that guy? Is he somewhere in the middle but this is something to be watching because he could be really cool to you and sell himself to you and show you all the good things, but how's he treating the waitress? This is a funny one, but how does he treat animals? That's interesting. Like, how does he treat dogs? Is he a punk to dogs? Does he like kick them off when they come up to him and start smelling them? Does he kick at them? Or is he like, hey, no worries. I like dogs. I like animals. That... That sounds crazy to bring up that analogy, but, but it, it shows a bit of patience in him. How is, he, how is he around the boys? What did they think of him? So before you bring him home, you better be sure of all those other things. And then when you finally bring him home to meet the boys, what do they think of him? Are they just pawns in his game? Or is he genuinely interested in them and, and comes to their level, plays their games listens to their day. What kind of guy is he? Look at his fruits. Don't get physical with him. Don't get physical with him. Why? Because your heart attaches. Now, this is just science. Your, your body, when your body attaches to someone, your heart goes with it. And when your heart goes with it, it's harder to pull it back. Even if you find out he's a bad guy, it's harder to pull your heart back if you physically attached yourself to him. That's just the the makeup of human beings. Be very careful. Follow the fruits. Guard your heart. Don't get physical. Don't move in with him. Those are your standards. All right, next question. Subject line says, sticky family issue, help. 
Sticky Family Issue Help. It says, Hey Granger, so my mom passed away in January of 2020. My parents were married for 49 years and at first it was really hard on my dad. Over the past two years, he and my aunt have become very close, too close for comfort for my brothers and I. Keep in mind, this is my mom's sister. Since she passed, my aunt has also divorced her husband. I think it's great that they have each other to talk to, but I feel like things may be crossing the line. We aren't comfortable at this point. They actually just went to Florida on a vacation, just the two of them for a few days. Should I just let this go and pray that God gives me peace to look over this? Or should I mention to him and her our concerns and how much grief it's causing us? Thank you. And Yee Yee comes from Heather. Heather, thank you for the email. Um... Let me let me do this. I'm sorry for the loss of your dad. I'll start I'll start there. Um I know what it's like to lose a father. It's it's difficult. Uh, I'm sorry a mother. <laughs> let me let me rewind. I was thinking about my dad. I lost my dad. I know what it's like to lose a parent. You lost a mother. Um I lost a dad. And so I could I could look at this per, from the perspective of my mother and you have this perspective with your dad. We want, don't we love them? Like, don't we love our parents? Don't we love them enough to to truly want them to be happy? And this seems like you're hindering that a little bit for the sake of you, because it makes you uncomfortable. It's causing you grief. It's it's digging up some things about about your your loss that is making you uncomfortable. So the the interesting thing about this is your dad is is now kind of seeing your aunt but he was married to your mom for 49 years. Is there anybody else in the world that you would rather see your dad happy with than your mom's own sister that probably he can look into her eyes and see your mom and and hear her voice through her voice, because sisters talk the same. He, he, he could talk about the same things about your mom, that things that no one else in the world would understand except for your aunt. And so he sees a part of her in your aunt. Isn't that an amazing thing? And I want you to see it from that perspective, like, Dad, this is crazy and amazing you, you lost mom. I can't imagine how hard that would be because we don't, as kids, we don't know how hard it is to lose someone after 49 years of marriage. So it's like, Dad, I can't imagine what it would be like to lose mom. It's hard enough for me as the kid. I can't imagine you losing your wife. And I just want you to be happy, Dad. And, and, and after these couple years, if, if you're starting to rebuild a little bit, and, and heal while talking to my aunt. And if she reminds you a little bit of mom, dad, I'm so, I'm just, I'm ecstatic for you. I don't want the best for you, dad. I don't want to judge you. I don't want to think it's creepy. And deep down you do, but you don't have to admit that. But it's like, dad, I'm just, I just want you to enjoy life and be happy. You deserve it, dad. You're a great dad. You were faithful to mom for 49 years. You deserve to continue happiness. And guess what? Here's the crazy thing. What would your mom want? Two options. Would your mom want your dad to just be single the rest of his life and be in misery and alone? Or would she want your dad to go find somebody, some random woman that has nothing in common with anybody in the family and bring her in and everyone has to meet her and learn her and meet her parents and learn about her family and her kids? Those are the two options that you're, you're, you're saying he should go for. What would your mom want? Because the option he picked is different than both of those. It's like keeping it in the family, talking to the sister. She reminds me of her. Her eyes look like her. Her hair falls like her. The way she talks and the different jokes that she makes is just like mom. She even laughs like mom. It's the closest thing he can get to her. And it's making him happy. I want you to see it that way. And I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that you should just roll over and say, I love it. I'm just saying, look at it from his perspective. That might change everything. Love you guys.
See you next Monday. Yee yee. Thanks for joining me on the Granger Smith Podcast. I appreciate all of you guys. You could help me out by rating this podcast on iTunes. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to this channel. Hit that little like button and notifications bell so that you never miss any time I upload a video. If you have a question for me that you would like me to answer, email grangersmithpodcast at gmail.com. Yee yee.